Ladies and gentlemen, we already know the answer to this, but I'm going to kind of go through this step by step, so please follow along because a lot of students forget this, and then I'll give you guys a problem to try on your own. So, Juno, first thing you're going to want to do is I'm going to use some color coordination to help you along, follow along these steps. And it is kind of a step by step process that a lot of students get mixed up on. However, I'll show you exactly where the majority of students do. So, the first thing we want to do, first thing we want to make sure that we um, have when we're, whenever we're doing long division is make sure our dividend and divisor are in descending order. And, we'll talk, and I'll talk more about this um, when I get to it. But oh, that could not have been good. It is okay. Uh, Shane, you ready? Ooh. So we have, um, so here's our divisor. I'll label these in a second. But we got to make sure this is in descending order. What I mean by descending order is you have the power highest, right, and then going down in descending form. And then our dividend, which again, I'll, exp I'll uh, label this later, is in descending power, right? So we're good here. So now, all we're simply going to do is we're going to take our leading term and we're going to divide it into our first term of our dividend. Now, a lot of students kind of have trouble with this. So what I recommend doing is just do your work on like the side of your paper. How many times is x divided into x squared? Well, sometimes students have a hard time understanding that, visualizing it. So just write it. How many times does x divide into x squared? Usually students can do this a lot easier than they can do it that way. Well, using the power, using the quotient rule, we know it just goes in there x times, right? Question? No. Okay. Does that make sense? Does everybody see that? x divides into x squared x times. So we'll put the x right up here. Then what we have to do is every single time you get your power and your quotient act, you have to multiply it by both terms. So x times x is x squared. x times negative x is a negative x. Now, this is where I kind of joke, even though it's not 99%. I'll just say here's where 99% of students make mistakes in long division. It's really about probably 70%, but I think 99% is a little bit more saying, hey, make sure you pay attention to this. So now what we need to do is we need to subtract. But if you just write subtraction like this, what's going to happen is students will only subtract the first two, and they'll make a mistake over here. Put them in parentheses. So now what I'm doing, and sometimes I also say this out loud, so if I hear you saying this when you're taking a test, that's OK. Just make sure you whisper. x squared minus x squared is just 0. Now, negative 3x minus negative x. Make sure it's not negative 3x minus x. It's negative 3x minus negative x. Again, if you're having trouble doing that, just write it out to the side. Negative 3x minus a negative x. Well, you have a double negative, so that's really just adding then, right? So it's really negative 3x plus x, which is negative 2x. Yeah, it's x squared minus x squared. Okay, then why would you why would you do the x? Because you have to subtract these and you have to subtract these. Yeah, but then what, what are you doing with the minus and the negative one? I have multiplied x times x gave me x squared. X times negative one gives me negative x. So you multiply by both and then write it below. Okay. Um, and therefore I get negative two x, and then I'll bring down the two, positive two. And now we start all over, all over again data. So what we'll do is we'll say, how many times does x divide into negative 2x? Again, if that's giving you trouble, negative 2x divided by x, that just equals negative 2. So therefore, I write a negative 2 up here. And I do the same thing. I multiply negative 2 times both of my terms in my divisor. Negative 2 times x is going to give me a negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 1 is going to give me a positive 2. And then again, I go back to simplifying, or I'm sorry, subtracting my rows. And I get negative 2x minus 2x is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. Yes? OK, so now if we know something evenly divides, we know that we call this our remainder, right? 
You guys remember that right here? So since the remainder is zero, that means that evenly divides, which we already knew from over there, correct? So therefore, this is what we call our quotient. Same thing as our answer. Under the radical, what we're dividing into is what we call our dividend. What are we dividing? What we're using to divide into is what we call our divisor. And whatever value we have at the end is what we call our remainder. Okay, so this means the dividend under the remainder. Under the radical, okay. what you're dividing into. Okay, so for instance, 6 is our dividend, 2 is our divisor, 3 is our quotient. 2 is, what? Two is your divisor, like over there. Yeah. Like 6 divided by 2 equals 3. 6 is your dividend, 2 is your divisor, 3 is the quotient. Remainder is 0. All right. Now, I need you guys.